Praise the Lord. Good morning to the church. It's good to see you. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord. I greet our pastor this morning, Reverend Aline and his wonderful wife, First Lady, and all the members of the pastor's council, all the members of all the heads of departments, all the members of the household of faith, all the believers in the house, even those who might believe in other things other than God. It's good to be in the presence of the Lord today. As I sat on my seat this morning, I was thinking, God, it's so awesome to be able to come into your house. Thank God for the freedom of worship church. Sometimes we take things for granted, uh, but to know we can enter these gates with thanksgiving uh, and come into these courts with praise. Uh, we don't have to hide. Uh, we don't have to bend down. Uh, we don't have to look around, uh, be scared or fearful, uh, but we can be in the presence of the Lord uh, with the people of the Lord uh, on the day of the Lord uh, to hear a word from the Lord. Uh, we need to worship the Lord. Uh, all that men would pray. Praise the Lord uh, for his goodness. Uh, some of you, everybody in this house this morning uh, has a story. Uh, but one thing we can say is that God uh, has been good. Uh, even though we've not been always good, uh, God has been good. Uh, so let God's people uh, worship him uh, for his goodness. Uh, or had it not been uh, for God on our side, uh, I don't know about you, uh, COVID would have taken us, uh, but God kept us. Uh, I say we are here today. Uh, because God loves us. We are here today only because of His grace, His mercy, and His grace kept us. That's why we are here. So we need to just worship Him. I said we need to just worship Him in your own way. Open your mouth and say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for your goodness. And in my right mind, no one woke me up. No one took me off my bed. No one took me in the shower. No one sat me down and saved me. God, you gave me all that I needed. And in my right mind, I know today is Sunday. I know that way love. I know who I am. I know my name. I know my family. God, I am thankful because you be good, 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 good. So good. Let everything that has breath in this house praise the Lord because God is good, church. Hallelujah. I say God is good. And sometimes we are guilty of the sin of omission. We don't give him his due. When we recognize, uh, I don't care how high the price is, goal, God is still our provider, church. I said he's still our provider. Uh, oh, come on, church. Uh, despite how bad things get, uh, we just concluded uh, the United Nations Bay Conference, Global Conference, uh, and all the heads, uh, except those four that were left out, uh, were included. Uh, and they talked about sustainable development, uh, sustainable growth, uh, global warming. Uh, they talk about everything. Uh, but can I tell you, uh, except the Lord watched the house, uh, the Lord in vain that seated. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman will watch in your church. God, he that is above is above all. He's a keeper, he's a provider, he's a strengthener, he's a preserver. We need to praise him because God is good, 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 even when we are not. Even when we are not. Yes, we have to pray for our leaders and we will pray for them. They will try, but they need God. They need wisdom. They need discernment. They need guidance. And we are going to pray that despite the global crises that we are facing, we are serving the Christ of every crisis. He's able, church. When they're trying to wrap their heads around what is happening, God's got a plan already. I said He's got a plan. So I want to greet you this day and to. To say to you that I am honored. Thank you, Pastor, for giving me the opportunity to be here to share with the members of the household of faith and those special um, former king's daughters uh, who would have participated. Yes, those former king's daughters is also good to be with you uh, and to share the word of God with you today. We are a family. Uh, and I am glad that the blood of Christ just uh, just makes us one, church. Just makes us one. Despite our look 
display our ethnicity, display our status, display where we come from, our past. I thank God for the blood that just makes us one today. And I worship God because He's able. Father, we thank you for this day in your presence. Thank you for, 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 for the, the fact that we understand, we recognize that you are here. For surely the presence of the Lord is in this house. Father, as we will look into the perfect law of liberty even now, help us not to be forgetful hearers, but to be doers of your word. So that we will be blessed in everything that we do. I pray, God, for every heart that would listen, that would hear. Father, may the word fall on good ground and may good fruit come forth. God, to the honor and the glory of your name. We come against the plans of the enemy to steal, to attempt to steal this word. Oh God, we serve him an eviction notice from this house. We set up a small screen and a firewall and we say, Satan, the blood of Jesus is against you. We pray, God, that the enemy will not conquer in this house but that your people will triumph and overcome. We pray for those hearts, God, who have not yet said yes to you. We pray that your word and the Holy Spirit who is the deliverance minister would minister God to hearts and oh God will bring deep conviction and oh God those souls will say what must I do to be saved Father I decrease in this house that you may increase that you may be exalted may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight for you are my strength you are my king you are my redeemer you are the revealer in Jesus name Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord today. Thank you. Praise the Lord. You know, when I came in and passed on first lady said, you know, you look so nice. They say the pastor, you know, it is it's not it is grace, not gravy. It, 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 it is grace. I'm telling you, with all that has been going on, I, thir- I turned 60 years old in November last year. And I know it is the grace of God that has kept me, has been keeping me, has been sustaining me. And I want you to know that God is a keeper. Can I tell somebody that this morning? God is a keeper. And I, 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 I rejoice when I remember my journey, where I came from. I know it is only God that has kept me until this day. So turn with me your Bibles for a short while to Jeremiah chapter 29 verses 10 to 13. And I'm reading the Amplified Version. For thus says the Lord, when 70 years of exile had been completed for Babylon, I will visit, inspect you and keep my good promise to you to bring you back to this place. For I know the plans and the thoughts that I have for you, saith the Lord. Plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster. To give you a future and a hope. Then you will call on me and you will come and pray to me. And I will hear your voice. And I will listen to you. Then with a deep longing you will seek me. And require me as a vital necessity and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart the theme for this word this morning is just three words God's got you come turn to your neighbor and say neighbor God's got you tell yourself self call your name God's got you yes because sometimes self-talk is so very important. That positive affirmation is so important. Uh, when the enemy wants to fill your mind with so much negativity, you've got to know how to tell him, not on my walk, Satan, not today. I have no space for you. This morning as we look at the world and even as we reflect on what's happening around us, we, 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 we want to acknowledge that we are not in a Babylonian camp. Based on what the word of God is telling us in Jeremiah 29. However, the challenges and the crises that we are facing today can be compared to a similar situation. 
so this theme as i reflected on it today is really a powerful reminder that in these difficult seasons that we live god yahweh adonai al sharia whatever you want to call him today el elion and 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 the omnipotent omniscient uh, ever present god uh, is still uh, his providential care is still active in our lives today definitely uh, it works uh, as a booster shot in the arm of every believer to create an immunity we've been talking about booster shots recently uh, so so when we understand that even uh, in these challenging seasons uh, in these seasons of crisis uh, that the providential care of yahweh uh, works as a booster shot uh, in the arm of every believer uh, to create an immunity to the infiltration uh, or encroachment uh, of the spirit of fear uh, and anxiety uh, and worry uh, and intimidation and depression and an abandonment uh, that the enemy is trying to use uh, to hold us in captivity uh, that's why the bible tells us uh, god has not given you the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind today i am provoked to direct our attention to this word which encapsulates the focus of this discourse today god says i know it is important to recognize who the speaker is not just a normal person so in this season when you may be feeling a bit hopeless whether you are here or whether you are on 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 the social network uh, you may be feeling helpless uh, you may be feeling fearful uh, i dare to say today that i believe that this is a sure word uh, from the heart of god uh, through the mouth of jeremiah the prophet uh, not just to those uh, who were in exile in babylon uh, and not only into our ears this morning uh, but into our spirit Spirits, uh, because we can hear stuff uh, and if it doesn't transfer into our spirit uh, it is not beneficial uh, but into our spirits uh, to encourage uh, and reassure and strengthen uh, and, and, and remind us uh, that in spite of all that is happening around us uh, our God uh, is still in control uh, despite how chaotic the world may appear to be uh, despite what is happening in this season uh, God is saying to us uh, I am navigating you through uh, these terrible times uh, i am navigating you through these challenging times uh, and he's saying uh, all you need to do is trust me uh, i am the speaker uh, in this scenario for i know it's not the government that's speaking church uh, because yes uh, they may have good intentions uh, but they are limited uh, by so many things uh, but when you hear god uh, the creator of the universe uh, the one who said let there be and there was uh, the one who made you and i in his image uh, and like this uh, and he says i know uh, you can stand uh, attention uh, i know that once god says it uh, you can uh, rely uh, you can depend uh, you can rest uh, you can dwell uh, he says i know the plans I have for you aren't you glad today to know church that God has planned your life sometimes we plan our lives we plan for our children and circumstances come up and not things or far less but when God says I know the plans I have for you there ain't no devil in hell there ain't no circumstance that can erode the plans of God for our lives hallelujah i am sure that anyone in this house or listening who is going through a difficult time now whether it is a health crisis or a family crisis or a mental or emotional crisis or even a spiritual crisis would cling to anything that would offer the smallest the minutest bit of hope the, the smallest help, the smallest comfort, and the smallest assurance, uh, any inkling that you can get that things will get better. If it is your health, if you're going through a health crisis uh, and the doctor's report is not good,
good but somehow as time progresses and you go back the, the report changes you're still holding on to something it is a family situation and you're saying daughter i didn't sign up for this but god i'm going to trust you i'm going to depend upon you i'm going to rely upon you it is some situation where they want to take your house and your land and everything that you have and you're saying god i don't know how this is going to work out but my trust is in you all oh, we know that we can depend on the god who is able to turn the situation around who is able to mitigate on our behalf who is able to stand up and stand in and say not my child that's my child or oh, i am going to fight he says just stand still and see the salvation of the lord for the enemy that you see today whatever that enemy represents whether it is fear or worry or anxiety or health issues oh god is saying you will not see that enemy tomorrow because i have great plans for your life and i know what they are so my thing is if god knows i don't need to know i just need to lean on him i just need to put my weight on him my w-a-i-t or my w-e-i-g-h-e -E. i just need to cast everything on him because i know that my god is able to do all things a quick synopsis summary of the conditions the circumstances surrounding the children of israel reveals that they were exiled in babylon which means that they were taken captive their land had been conquered by the babylonians and they were captured and they were taken prisoners for 70 years and it was due to their disobedience to god it was a church we need to be careful delayed obedience is still disobedience God wants us to walk in obedience to him despite what the world is saying despite what other people are saying we need to know the importance of obeying God it was punishment for their disobedience to God so here was a community of people who had lost everything and were somewhat displaced traumatized and desperate for hope hoping that a change will come they were even given false hope that they would return from their captivity um, to their homeland in a couple of years that was false hope and we see so much of that around uh, misrepresentation of the truth we see so much uh, uh, um, person saying things and, 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 and people live on social media and, 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 and their birth and, and their breathe social media and the conspiracy theories and, and the things that, that get even some believers they, they, they hang out on social media more than they hang out in the world and the social media controls their lives, their thinking their movement even more than the word of God. So here were these people who were getting false hope that in a couple years they will return to their homeland can i say that a promise is a comfort to a fool that's what the old people said anybody know how i've ever heard that promise is a comfort to a fool so jeremiah had to write them and set them straight set the record straight uh, and tell them uh, in, a, in, in, in a in a in a short form that really and truly actions have consequences yes so here were these people that were in a strange land and and we heard we heard that in might have been sam samity or somewhere there when they said but the rivers of babylon where we sat down here we wept when we remember zion and 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 they were saying you know what uh, we desired to pray and to worship but how can we sing the lord's summer in a strange land uh, sometimes uh, because of our disobedience and our weariness uh, we become displaced uh, we, we we are out of a position uh, but i am glad that we are still serving the god uh, that even when we are out of position uh, he still has plans uh, for always because he says i know the plans i have for you there's a popular quote which says when you fail to plan you must plan to fail but can i say to us this morning that's not the mo of our god because simply put he's he is the god that cannot and will not fail never 
so, so, so hear the words of the I am that I am. Hear the words of Yahweh to the, today to us. And Adonai, he's saying to us, the one who we can call Abba, who we can call Daddy, the one who adopted us and made us and gave us all the benefits uh, that are encapsulated in that adoption process uh, and made those benefits available to us. Uh, church, we are his children uh, and, uh, and uh, he's the one we can speak after. You know, there's some people you can't talk after them. You don't hold your breath or think twice before you quote them. But they say to us, we can quote God today. Psalm 33 says, Let the world fear the Lord, and let everyone stand in awe of him. For when he spoke, the world began. It appeared at his command. So, so the word of God is saying that he's aware. He has knowledge. He has information. He, he knows us intimately. Why? He knows us because he made us. When we read Psalm 139, we've been fearfully uh, and wonderfully made by him, intricately woven uh, by his hand. We are special to God. Uh, and God wants us to know this morning three things. Uh, he has a perfect plan for our lives. Can I say to you that God has got you? In spite of what is happening in your life and my life and in the world in which we live, it can never override it can never nullify the plans of God for our lives. Proverbs 19.21 says, You can make many plans, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. That's the word of the Lord. We can make plans. It is God saying we can trust him even when fear and uncertainty and anxiety and worry and dread comes knocking at our door. We can trust God. God's plans are those of a relationship with us and fellowship with us. That's the plan of God for our lives. And because he planned that once we are connected to him, we know that God will orchestrate our journey because we can trust him. When the angel appeared to Mary and told her what she was going to, that she was going to give birth to the Christ child, um, that death was not Mary's plan, nor was it Joseph's, but it was God's. And today, because of that birth and because of the subsequent death of Jesus, we become beneficiaries and recipients of redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. When the plan of God kicks in, it overrides and nullifies everything else, and it brings into focus the real heart and mind and will of God for our lives. Very often the plans that unfold in our lives sometimes are not even for us. But God will use us as conduits to execute his will in the earth for others. God generally does not show us beforehand the path, the journey, the steps of the journey, even the end, the conclusion. But we can be assured that once he's planned us, he's going to be with us. He's going to keep us. He's going to sustain us. He's asked Joseph. Joseph had the dream of those sheep bowing down. And like any nice little boy, he shared, he's excited about the dream. And he shared with his brother and his father. And they got very annoyed, very annoyed with him. How dare you come up in our face and say that what you have is going to bow down to us. You are out of order, little boy. You are a young with a snap again out of our face. But then they understand that when God plans your life, when God has a plan in place, I don't care what anybody thinks about you. I don't care what the idea is. I don't care what your thoughts are. You can have your own opinion. You can have your own mind thinking. You can have your own thoughts. You can have your own feelings. But you can have your own facts. Because if God says it is so, whether you believe it or not, whether you like it or not, whether you want it to be that way or not, when God says it, it is so. You cannot stop it. You cannot interrupt it. You cannot hinder it. Because the plans of God, the word of God is yes 
and amen. I want to say to you today, you can trust God even in this season of your life when you can't understand, you don't have enough money to pay your bills or you have certain things in a raise, you don't have enough money to pay a mortgage and some days you have to cut from here to put there and you have to juggle your finances but can I tell you, God is a keeper, he's keeping you in your right mind even though you're juggling those finances, you're not going mad, you like it off, you want it off, the banking clear back the house, God has been keeping it, he says I know the plans I have for you and in the midst of the crisis I will sustain you, I will strengthen you, I will lift you, I will carry you because I am your God. He has perfect plans for you in an imperfect world and in imperfect situations. The plans of God are still perfect. I want you to change. I, I want to reframe. I want a cognitive reframing to take place in your spirit this morning to look through a different lens. The lens that you're looking through shows you what isn't, what can't, what is out of order, what is out of alignment. I want you to look through a different lens and get your mind and realign with the word of God and say, God, despite the fact that I can't see, I don't understand this seem a little challenging I'm going to trust you God even though I don't see the end I'm going to trust you you're the way maker you're the promise keeper oh you're the light in the darkness that's who you are I'm going to trust you when I cannot even understand God I'm going to trust you you know the way that I take oh these are fiery trials but they only come to make me strong I'm going to trust you why? because you are in control of my life You've planned me. You've planned me. And your, your plans are perfect. Not only perfect plans, but he has given us precious promises. The word of God keeps us, church. People promise to the end. Loved ones, children promise to behave, not to get into trouble. We teach them, we model, we, we show them the values, we teach them the values. Uh, and, and, and they promise they're going to, and, and sometimes they disappoint us. Significant others in our lives, spouses, uh, friends, uh, governments, uh, teacher, everybody somehow sometimes will fail uh, because uh, their promises uh, are not yes and amen. But we have a God who keeps his promises, Second Peter 1 forces, and because of his glory and excellence, he has given unto us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. And Galatians 3.29 says, And now that you belong to Christ, you are the true children of Abraham. You are his heirs. And God's promise to Abraham belongs to you. Every promise that God made to Abraham church because we are heirs, because we are the children of Abraham. I want to remind you that every promise is applicable to you this morning and because that middle wall of partition was broken down we no longer have to stand in any site or outside of any sanctuary or about anger because of that broken down wall and that right veil that's why we are in this house in the presence of God having access the same access that anyone can have because of the promises that God has made to us and as we read and meditate on those precious promises church our faith goes into action it is activated and our faith because it is activated then we begin to see the promises of God manifested in our lives in a tangible and a real way it is then sight beyond what we see I don't know if you understand that but you can still see and don't have the sight. Sight means that even though the natural eye is not seeing it, uh, God, I can see it through the realm of the spirit, uh, the spiritual eye. So that's what sight beyond see, what I see is. Uh, God, I can't see it naturally. Everything that I see now is against 
the grand. Everything. Uh, but because of, of your precious promises, uh, because I understand uh, your word tells me, uh, don't be afraid. Uh, God says, uh, my promises are to strengthen you. Uh, and you don't need to fear. So that's why Isaiah says, uh, fear thou not to fear. I am with you. Uh, be not dismayed, for I am your God. Yes, I will help you. Uh, yes, I will strengthen you. Uh, yes, I will accord you uh, with my righteous right hand. Uh, if there's anyone in this house today, uh, that you're walking in fear I come against that spirit of fear and I invoke the word of God to you into your spirit God says daughter God says son fear not my promises are yes yes fear not for I am with you I will strengthen you I will uphold you with my mighty my royal my great right hand I am going to carry you even in the midst of your challenging time he promises to hear and answer our prayers. First John 5, 14, 15 says that we have this confidence. We have this confidence. We are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. Our children come and they ask us things and they believe that we will do it for them and you know sometimes you have to cut your face to spoil your features that you can provide for them am i right they don't know the sacrifices you have to make and the things that you have to do or i have to do to make life easy to, for them to provide for them to help them to have a good education sometimes we have to go all the way out on them and they don't know but you know why they come and ask us because we are parents and because they have the confidence that once I ask mommy or daddy, I know mommy and daddy will do it for me. That's the same thing with our God. He's our Abba. He's our daddy. And whatever we need, we can ask of him. Because in the words, this is the confidence. This is the assurance that I have in him. Church, it is good that we have someone that we can have confidence in. You know why? Because we trust him. The someone who says, it's so sweet to trust in Jesus just to take him at his word just to rest upon his promise just to know the self the Lord Jesus Jesus how I trust him how I proved him all and all and all and all Jesus Jesus precious Jesus all for grace all for grace all for grace to trust him more we trust him because of his promises that we know that he answers prayer the word says some trust in chariots and some in horses but what we will remember the name of the lord our god yes the chariots will capsize and the wheels will come off and the horses will fall but we are serving a god who is constant who is consistent who never fails who never changes oh we are serving a god who is here with us everywhere who's omnipotent omnipresent who's immutable oh you may serve the god who can do all things who is great who is excellent in greatness who is mighty in power who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can ask or think or desire aren't you happy today that despite what is going on around you your god is able i say your god is able my god is able god can god can church god will because he says i've got you i've got you even though you don't feel it god says i've got you if he carries the weight of the world on his shoulder church at the church of god at salt is i've come to tell you god is carrying you god is holding you god will strengthen you he will uphold you with his mighty right hand that's the god that we serve his promises are yea and amen oh i want to speak some strength I want to speak some strength into some soul this morning uh, for you to know that even the youth uh, come on the word of God tells us uh, has thou not known uh, has thou not heard uh, that the everlasting Lord the God uh, of the creator of the ends of the earth uh, faint of not uh, neither is weary uh, he gives power to the faint uh, and to them that hath no might uh, he is 
increase of strength uh, even the youth uh, shall fear to be weary uh, and the young men shall utterly fall uh, but they that wait upon the Lord uh, hallelujah shall renew their strength uh, they shall mount up with wings uh, as eagles uh, they shall rather not be weary uh, they shall walk uh, and not fear uh, oh sister wait on God uh, brother wait on God uh, he says I've got you uh, I've got you uh, you can wait on me uh, I will not disappoint you hallelujah hallelujah final point is that God has predestined you to prosper I said he has predestined you to prosper he has determined in advance that despite what is happening you will prosper the peace that God promises in Jeremiah 11 comes from the Hebrew word Shalom and that is translated as prosper prosper you so the promise of peace that God makes in this word is actually a promise of prosperity don't get tired because when we think about prosperity we only think about money so stop put a pin there don't get tired prosperity is not only about money church some of us ain't have much oh but look god is a keeper he give you wisdom he give you understanding he give you good health he give you good friends oh church come on Oh, come on, you give your home to live in. Uh, you never make the bed hungry. Uh, or some of you will walk. You don't have a care, but he give you the strength to walk. Come on, church. Uh, we're talking about prosperity. Uh, this is the blessings of the Lord uh, that make rich uh, and that no sorrow. It's not only about money. He give you money to uh, But he says, I know the plans uh, that they will prosper you. Uh, church is God is saying, uh, I am prospering you today. Uh, I know the way that you are walking. Uh, I am prospering you. Uh, I am keeping you in your right mind. Uh, and give you strength every day that you get off your bed. You can live and you can move. You can have your being because I am with you. I am the Lord of heaven's armies. I am with you. I am the God of Jacob. I am your refuge. And every day you get up is a day of prosperity. You have your job. You have your business. God says, I'm prospering you. I'm prospering you. Yes. It doesn't mean though the absence of chaos. Can I tell you? Prosperity does not mean the absence of a crisis or a challenge, but it means that even in the face of prosperity, these things come that the sustaining power of Yahweh is going to keep you in perfect peace. Come on, church. Oh, let's get it right today. Sometimes we think that we are new. Come on. That's what the booster shot is for. The booster shot is to help you to know that you are not immune from the crisis and the chaos, but it's going to be a, a, a backup, a, a backup, a, 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 a reinforcement to, to sustain you in the fight, to keep you in the crisis, to protect you in the shadow of all that's going on. He's your present helper in the time of trouble. He's your son. He's your she. He will keep you in the midst of everything. God will. God will. You are able to overcome and abide in his peace and experience the prosperity on your journey of life. So the prosperity is your peace and your strength and your grace and your wisdom and your understanding. That's what the prosperity is. And the money too. I ain't going to leave out the money. For those of you that have the millions in here. Not going to leave that out. But, but yes, that, that makes up a part of the whole, 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 whole. Yes, God is saying, I know the plans. That's why the Bible says, don't worry about anything. To pray about everything. And tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. You will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything you can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Keep putting into practice all you have learned and received from me. Paul says in Philippians 4, 6 and 9, he says, 
everything you heard from me and saw me doing uh, and God says uh, that he's going to give you uh, um, a perfect peace uh, but then the word says then the God of peace will be with you uh. so God is saying I am the God of peace uh, but I'm giving you the peace of God I am the God of peace give you the peace of God you can't have nothing better than that church I am the God of peace give you the prosperity of Yahweh to sustain you along your journey of life God knows the plans church why he knows them because he made them I said he knows them because he made them and we can walk according to those plans because we know the planner when you know the planner you can walk according to the plans and knowing the planner makes all the difference because his promises are so let it be yes and amen which means so let it be if God has planned it we say so let it be second Corinthians 1 19 to 20 says for Jesus Christ the son of God does not waver between yes and no he is the one whom Silas Timothy and I preach to you and as God's ultimate yes, he always does what he says. For all of God's promises have been fulfilled in Christ with a resounding yes. And through Christ our amen, which means yes, ascends to God for his glory. And my scriptures are coming from the New Living Translation. So that a good plan is like a, a good word now. It shows the final destination and usually the best way to get there says it's Stanley Judd so I want to say to us this morning that when we understand that God has planned our lives we also understand that there's a responsibility that is also attached to us that's his responsibility but our responsibility then is to call on him he says because they know the plans, he says, that I have for you know, what those plans are. What is the ultimate outcome? He didn't spell them out. But a hope and a future, fulfilling purpose is the ultimate of the plan. So then our responsibility now is not hard. He says, then you will call on me. You will come and pray to me. And I will hear your voice and I will listen to you. So what God is saying, I have already put things in place for you. We need to have a dialogue constantly. We have to. We need to stay connected. So you need to stay connected to me. You need to maintain that fellowship and that relationship with me. Then you will call on me. I know, as Pastor was saying, I've been in pastoral leadership for over thirty-eight years. I understand. And that's with my husband. That in this season of COVID-19 pandemic where we experienced so much shutdown and there was not much happening in a meeting like this a gathering like this persons have resigned themselves to staying at home I gonna watch from home probably some of you are looking at us right now I gonna watch from home but you're watching and you're cooking you're watching and you're washing you're washing and you're like, no, you're bearing your feet up. You're washing and you're in all parts of the house, in the bathroom. You're listening and you're in the shower. Come on, amen or ouch, or poor me. And so there's a divided loyalty. So God is not getting all of you. And, and the enemy wants you to feel, you know what? Oh, you're still doing it because you're still connected. You're still watching. But let's, uh, let's, 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 let's get you on the standard. That's a ploy and a trick and a deception from the enemy. The Bible says that we must not forsake the assembly, the coming together of the body, because there's strength in numbers. We are struggling together. Yes, you may say, but well, I am still together because I am with them on Zoom. It's not the same. What do you think the world will have said? There's a responsibility on our part to be corporate, to be involved in corporate worship church. Because what has happened? Is that even though we are telling ourselves, 
I still watch. Many of us are still are disconnected. So now watching is only a form of God. It's just a form. It's just a ritual. But there's no disconnection. There's no more desire to prayer. There's no more desire for the word. There's no. So the only time you hear the words when you when you when you tune in, but you're busy doing other things. Come on, church. We cannot afford to allow the enemy to deceive us. These are the last days, and the Bible says that the very elect, if you are not sick, careful, will be not saved, will not make it. God is calling. God is calling us to come back to our place of responsibility, getting back into His house, and understand that He's requiring of us that we stay connected to Him in a holistic way. Church, I want us to understand that's the requirement of God. I don't care what nobody say. I make no apologies for what I'm saying this morning. This is what God says, and God is saying He's going to hold it against us if we do not comply because delay disobedience is still disobedience, and disobedience is as the sin of witchcraft. And then, when we begin to see things crumbling around us, we don't understand that we give legal right for the enemy to come in through walking in disobedience we give the enemy the right to, to operate in our space in our sphere, sphere of influence because we are going contrary to what the word of God says I call you today and I call you out and I say it is time to get back into God's house and God, God, into God's presence and understand that there's a responsibility that God has given to us to stay connected he says then oh, don't shut off don't shut me off now don't shut me down now listen listen I command your spirit to listen to listen to what I'm saying God is calling on you that's the spirit of God that is bringing the conviction God is saying you will call on me and you will come and pray to me and I will hear your voice and I will listen that's what he says and I want you to know that God is saying there's a responsibility no we're not he's doing his part our responsibility he says and, and, and he says then with a deep longing you will seek me and require me as a vital necessity and you will find me when you search for me with all your heart what the enemy has done what we have allowed him to do God is saying I am calling you back from captivity because this is a type of captivity also where the enemy wants to keep us captive in our homes and just use a medium of zoom or whatever a virtual connection that is a captivity we need to break that church I said we need to break it that's a captivity that the enemy wants us to buy into and understand and then when you look at your life do a critical assessment of your life and if you're honest with yourself if me who is a preacher fight have to fight against and resist the enemy you know, to stop me from praying. If I don't press my way through, Pastor, I ain't gonna pray. If I don't press my way through, I ain't gonna read the word. You can sit down there and look pretty and pious and look holy, but I'm telling you the truth. I need to press my way through to maintain my relationship with God. And if after 25, 45 years I've been preaching, I'm gonna press my way through. How much more someone who don't have as much responsibility of me as me of delivering the word of God? you can slip into a place of stagnation a place of spiritual death and don't even recognize it I call you out today I speak life to every dead soul every dead spirit I call you forth and since God says call on me seek me pursue me you shall be found of me once you search me with all your heart God has promised to bring you back from captivity he made that promise good it took 70 years but as people also have a responsibility he's saying you have a responsibility so be careful of your posture be careful of your position the lord says in jeremiah 29 7 seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which they have carried you into exile Pray to the Lord for it, for, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. God is saying to us that we need to understand where we are so that we can begin to re recalibrate and, and, and change uh, the position, the posture that we are in uh, so that we can move back uh, and beyond where we were even pre 
COVID-19 pandemic. He says to you, he says to us, that once we seek him with all of our heart, we will be found of him. Romans, and I'm closing with this scripture. Romans 8, 35 to 39 says, and I'm reading from the Amplified Virgin. Who shall ever separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword and may and I'm not adding anything to the word or COVID-19 or global warming or all the crises or the Ukraine-Russia crisis are these things going to separate us just as it is written and forever remains written for your sake we are put to death all day long we are regarded as sheep for the slaughter the Bible says that the thief comes to steal to kill to destroy he says yet in all these things you are more than any more than a hero any more than conquerors in this house and gain an overwhelming victory through him who love us uh, so much that he died uh, for us uh, for I am convinced uh, and continue uh, to be convinced uh, beyond any doubt uh, that neither death uh, nor life uh, nor angels uh, nor principalities uh, nor things present uh, threatening uh, nor things to come uh, nor powers uh, nor height uh, nor death uh, nor COVID uh, nor warming uh, nor anything that the enemy brings uh, nor any created thing uh, will be able uh, to separate Rate me uh, from the love, uh, the unlimited love of God, uh, which is in Christ Jesus. Uh, God has uh, got you, uh, and because of God, you, uh, you will be steadfast uh, and unmovable, uh, always abounding uh, in the work of the Lord. Uh, for as much as you know, uh, once you love me, uh, your labor uh, shall not uh, be in vain uh, in the Lord. Nothing uh, shall separate us from the love of God. Uh, I say to you this morning, church, uh, God has got you. Uh, he said, I've got you laying out. I've got you coming in. I've got you laying out. I've got you go getting up. I've got you in a holistic way because I am the Lord of heaven's armies. I am with you. I am the God of Jacob. I am your refuge. Let's bow our heads for prayer at this time. God says, There's someone, is there anyone in this room? Anyone on the social media platform? Are you saying, God, I'm struggling? It's how you may even be here. You come to church, but it's still a struggle. God, I've been displaced for so long. I feel out of step. I feel disconnected and I'm coming to get connected but I still feel disconnected God says I know the plans he says yes you may feel so but I still got you I've still got you and the fact that you're here he says I've still got you I'm still working on you you are here in this house this morning you're saying God I need a touch from you I, I, I need a restoration some of us are on the on the defibrillator right now I say God I need resuscitation some of you got the, that thing in your throat I you're saying, God, I can't breathe on my order. I need help. God is saying, I got you. He said, I got you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to defibrillate you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do it for you. You are here. You're saying, God, I need a touch. My strength from yesterday is gone. I need a brand new touch. I know you plan my life, but right now I don't feel like it. I don't feel that way to me. But God, I come to you. I have a prayer that needs an answer. I need you now. I need you now, God. I need you now. He says, uh, come, you will seek me. You will call on me. And he says, he promised you today that you will find him. He promises you that he will hear, that he will hear your voice uh, when you cry unto him. He promises you that he will respond to you are here you can lift your hands you can stand you can come to the altar whatever you desire so let it be but god is here and he's up in your business up in our business up in our grill because he's believing for change this is a season of change or oh, this is a season of turnover i don't know about you but i am tired feeling down i am tired feeling depressed i'm tired feeling out of it i i don't know about you but i'm just tired i 
went through a bottle where I feel so I felt so cast down past her. I felt so out of it. I felt not like giving up, but I just felt uh, like not even uh, making the effort. Uh, but I want you to know that God uh, is a sustainer. Uh, his power uh, can make you uh, what you ought to be. Uh, he can bring you up, uh, he can bring you out, uh, he can give you new life, uh, he can give you new strength, uh, he can give you a new shot. Uh, oh God is saying, I've got the booster shot. Uh, oh, this is a place uh, for the booster shot today. Uh, oh, he says, uh, I want to give you that shot uh, to restore and to repair uh, and to replace it. He says, yes. Uh, he says, uh, all the infiltration uh, and the encroachment on the enemy, uh, on your mind, uh, on your emotions, uh, on your relationship with him. Uh, he has encroached, uh, but we serve him uh, an eviction notice. Uh, we cast him out. Uh, we're saying, God, uh, I need you. Uh, I need your grace. Uh, I need your strength. Uh, I need your power. I need the anointing uh, because the anointing uh, destroys the yoke. Uh, oh, God, I need a fresh fire this morning. Uh, a fresh fire from the hand of God. Uh, I declare an open heaven uh, over you uh, as you stand uh, with your hands lifted up. Uh, I declare a release uh, from the throne room of God uh, over you right now uh, to restore and to repair uh, all that has been destroyed, uh, all that has been taken from you. Uh, God says uh, this is your season uh, of restoration. Uh, this is your season uh, of renewal. Uh, this is your season of comeback. Uh, because God says uh, I got you. I got you. I got you. Father, you see every heart, every hand lifted in this house. Oh God, and on the social media network platform. You see God, the hurt. You see the pain. You see the frustration. You see the lethargy. You see the weariness. You see the tiredness. You see the depression and the despondency. You see those God who don't feel like going on. Who don't feel like pressing. You see those who don't feel like praying. Who don't feel like reading. And those who don't pray anymore. And who don't read anymore. But who just go along to get along. But we thank you God that you said. God, that you're going to restore us. You are the good shepherd. You said that you're going to restore us. You will give your life for us. And so, God, today, because you are the good shepherd, I ask that you will lead us beside still waters. And, oh, God, you will restore souls. You will lead us in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. I pray, God, that even now, God, you will anoint heads with oil. In the name of Jesus, I speak restoration to every cat. Down, uh, wounded, uh, frustrated, uh, depressed soul. Uh, I call out every soul this morning. Uh, I break, uh, I break the powers uh, of darkness uh, over the lives of your people. Uh, I speak, uh, oh God, deliverance. Uh, I speak release. Uh, I pray that minds uh, will be renewed right now uh, with your word. Uh, I call for desire. Uh, I call for passion. Uh, I call for perseverance. Uh, oh God, may they run and not be weary. May they walk and not faint because you've got them. Oh God, I'm speaking to the ears. I said, let every devil be a liar, but let the word of God and the truth of the word, oh God, activate their faith to rise up, understanding that there's a treasure in them. God, touch every heart, touch every life. Forgive us, God, for the, for, the, for, for the sin of omission. Forgive us, God, where we neglect, oh God, to deal and to handle and, oh God, to tend our relationship with you. And because of that, the enemy was able to come in on our ears and to sow tears and, oh God, to cause us to be separated. Forgive us. We acknowledge and we confess and we repent of our sin this morning. Forgive us of being negligent, of not attending to our commitment uh, our relationship with you forgive us uh, but oh God we thank you uh, that you are a God of reconciliation uh, I pray that the spirit of reconciliation uh, will be extended to your people uh, and that you'll restore God what the canker worm uh, and the palmer worm uh, and the caterpillars uh, and the locusts uh, has destroyed uh, I pray for restoration uh, for your people today uh, in the name of Jesus uh, give us a booster shot God uh, that we may all Rise and mount up with wings as eagles, running and not being weary, walking and not fainting in the name of Jesus. Thank you for doing it, even now. Help us, God, to be intentional about not just having a good time today, 
eating and having a good meal and then going home and allow it to go out in the draft but maybe be intentional about maintaining that relationship tending that relationship in jesus name. what if there's anyone in this house you don't know jesus as your savior you've not said yes to god but you're saying you know what i realize uh, i need something more to help me to navigate in this season lift your hands if you don't know jesus lift that hand let us see that hand we're going to pray for you you're not saved you're not a christian you don't know jesus as your savior but god wants to transform you if there's someone here are there hands that will be lifted and say remember me i need to have a relationship i want to know more than anything else that god has got me as his child if you're if you're saying i want salvation stand i want to see you as i want the world to see you i want the enemy to see you if you're saying i need jesus Jesus, stand up, stand up. Let the enemy see you because I want you to understand today that it will make news in heaven. It will not make the sun, the sun or the rains in midweek, but it will make news in heaven. Once you say yes, God, is there someone that is saying I need Jesus? Anybody? Anybody that's saying I need Jesus? Even those of you on the social media and you're saying you need Jesus, I want you to know that God loves you. You may even be backslidden. God loves you. He He's one who is always ready to receive the backslider. So I want to say this prayer. And I want you wherever you are to repeat this prayer. You might not be here, but you are watching. God loves you. Father, let's say this prayer for those who are not even here, but are saying this prayer. Let's repeat this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come before you. I acknowledge that you are my Savior. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Cleanse me. Wash me. Make me clean. I acknowledge that I have backslidden. And I need to be restored. I thank you that you are the God of mercy. And the God of forgiveness. I restore my relationship with you today. And I thank you for washing. And cleansing. And making me whole. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we lift the hands, the, the lives of those who have said yes to you today. We ask you, God, wherever they are right now, even if there may be someone here that have not indicated, but know for sure they're not connected to you. I pray that you will give them that intestinal fortitude and that spirit to rise up. And, oh God, to do the things that are right, to restore that relationship and to have fellowship our relationship with you. Thank you, God, that Jesus Christ died for their sins. And we ask you even now for, we thank you for redemption through your blood and the forgiveness of sins. And we ask you even now to receive them to yourself. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. God bless you. In Jesus' name.